Now, a campaign to push for abortion to be decriminalised is to be launched this month by the country's newest political party. The Women's Equality Party, led by Sophie Walker, says it's time abortion was made a sexual health and human rights issue rather than a Victorian criminal law, where a sentence still exists for making the decision to terminate a pregnancy. Well, I'm joined now from central London by the chair of abortion rights, Kerry Abel, uh, and in the studio by pro-life campaigner, uh, Christian Concern, Ashling Hubert. Um, Kerry, to you first. I, I was astonished, actually. I didn't realise that there was a life sentence uh, still in law that a woman can be forced to serve if she has an abortion. I mean, this is a very old law, admittedly. Do, do you think a lot of women know that, that actually something that's inside their bodies is subject to criminal law and, and not medical guidelines? Yeah, I think, I think that is surprising for people. And the first thing is, this law is from 1861. Um, Queen Victoria was on the throne when this um, legislation was enacted. And I think it, it's really old. It isn't in Scotland. They manage perfectly well without it. Um, and what um, we're talking about, um, abortion, from an abortion rights point of view, we've had a position against decriminalisation of abortion um, ever since we, we existed. Um, and we're talking about two clauses in the 1861 um, Act that um, I just don't think is relevant anymore. We don't live our lives in the same way as we did in the 1860s. Mm. Uh, let's put that to, to Ashling Hubert. I mean, it, it's, it's a very old law. It's a law that existed before women even had the right to vote. Yeah. It was a very different time. Yeah. Why do you think it's still appropriate that, that something that happens inside women's bodies is, is enshrined into, into a law that can lead to them going to prison for life? Yeah. Well, when you look at the Offences Against the Persons Act, uh, by definition in the title itself is to stop offences against people and that includes the unborn child. So in that same act we might say yes it's an old law but it protects actually our lives from offences against us. So inherently it's recognised that the pre-born child is a human being and therefore if it is human what would we expect the law to be when it comes to protecting life? That's a fair point, isn't it, Kerry? Lots of the laws that, that we use and abide by have been set down. Some of them date back to Roman times in principle. Just because a law is old doesn't mean it's out of date. Yeah, but this law is out of date. And we've got the um, 1967 Abortion Act now, so abortion is legal. So um, I don't think that this is necessarily relevant. Um, and as, as I said, they don't have this law in Scotland. Um, there's plenty of other laws that protect... Um, women, for example, from d domestic violence. Um, that's what we're talking about. But this is about criminalising um, women and girls who are, who are um, perhaps taking pills to take charge of their own destiny. And um, it's dangerous because it puts them in... Uh, worries. It worries them about trying to get medical attention if they need to because there's a, a life sentence potentially ha hanging over their head. And also, um, I think it's not able to be proved, really, because if... if somebody's having a, a, a miscarriage, ha, um, we've, there's a worry that, there's a concern that um, they'll be questioned and uh, second-guessed um, and, and then potentially have a life sentence over their head for something like a miscarriage. I mean, actually, it is slightly confused in the sense that, that, that as Kerry says, it, you, know, you, you can have an abortion, it's not illegal, but there is also this element in the criminal justice system that, that can prosecute a woman. The system as it stands means that doctors, you need two doctors to sign off on an abortion now, uh, th that actually some people think that the health services are becoming a bit complicit in it. It, it, it. As the situation stands at the moment, even though it is um, in law that a woman can ha have a life, life sentence in prison for doing it, that's not happening in practice. So w what merit is the law? It's not actually being used. Well, I actually totally believe what you're saying because um, I... I myself attempted to prosecute two doctors for agreeing to do gender selection abortions, so literally passing a death sentence on baby girls in the womb simply for being girls. Mm. And the, the case was dropped by the CPS, and I was left with a £47,000 bill to pay and a potential prison sentence, if I don't pay that bill, for trying to prosecute doctors who are willing to kill little girls in the womb simply for being girls. Mm. So I'm totally for women's rights. But first and foremost, their right to life, above all other rights. But, but isn't, isn't a fundamental heart of women's rights their ability to decide what happens to their own body? I, to I totally believe that women should be able to decide what happens to their own body and to their lives. 
But what about these women's rights? What about the little babies in their wombs? I think our right to choose should stop when it infringes on another person's right to life. Kerry, you're, you're frowning there. Um, well, I think, I think there's you're, um, confusing several different things. So the, um, the call for decriminalisation is to take it out of the criminal code and to um, take this life sentence away from women. Um, so that's punishing the woman. What you were talking about is the doctors and um, actually the CPS showed that the doctors had followed the guidelines. The guidelines are to ensure that a con conversation happens between a doctor and, and the woman um, so that sh uh, uh, the decision is made. I mean, I don't think that two doctors should have to make this decision, but the decision is made based on the woman's circumstances and her health and her mental health. So I think that trying to confuse these things is, is not helpful and it's misleading. I think that if you're against abortion, you're against abortion. Don't dress it up. Um, one in three women will have an abortion in her lifetime and we want to make sure that abortions are safe and legal and accessible and so that, you know, normal women can um, choose what they do with their okay. bodies. But I definitely... I if women are going to have abortions, I believe they're being completely deceived about the reality of what abortion is. One in three women have at least one abortion, you're totally right. Um, but if they're going to have an abortion, let's talk about what abortion is. It's the intentional, literal decapitation, dismemberment and disembowelment of a little human being. You can look on abortion7.co.uk and you see, but there are see the footage yourself. Well, uh, it's a... Ob obviously, the it, procedure it, is. It, it is that the procedure is what it is. There are lots of medical procedures that are deeply unpleasant and that nobody would wish to look at. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's about the woman's right to choose whether or not she goes through with that. No woman goes into an abortion thinking this is going to be a picnic, does she? Oh, absolutely, well, I and so. I would never say... So, sorry, yeah. it was just to ask you. Yeah. yeah, of course, I would never say that it's an easy decision for a woman to make. It's one of the hardest decisions she is going to have to make. But let's look at why is it hard? Why isn't it hard to go in and have a, an operation maybe to remove an appendix which could cause harm to your body? Or why are they not hard decisions and an abortion is a hard decision? Is it maybe because in our consciences we know that it's actually killing an innocent human being? Ke Kerry, as you say, one in three women having an abortion before the age of 45, 200,000 abortions in Britain last year. Are you comfortable with that figure? Do you think that, that the number of abortions in the UK should be lower? I don't, I don't know. I mean, my, my, they've been steady over the years. Um, my point I was going to make before about um, women not knowing what they're doing, um, more than 50% of women who have um, abortions now have already got a child, so they know exactly what they're doing. They know ha what it takes to look after children properly, and they're making a decision about their capacity to do that. Um, I think that conf confusing the issue anymore... Um, the re the I've, I've learned over the years that um, only a woman can decide what happens to do to her body at that place and time. She's the only one that knows her circumstances. Yeah. Um, and I think that we have to trust women. I, I totally think we should trust women if they are given all the information. And so it's our job to give them all the, all the information, not just about the procedure of an abortion, but what actually happens to that other little person inside their body. Do you, um, do you think the women are given enough information, Kerry? There, there has been some criticism, hasn't there, in the last year of some of the organisations that, that support women when they're trying to make these decisions that perhaps they haven't been giving them clear enough guidance? Well, let's talk about the guidance that um, is given because when, um, when we've done studies about the crisis pregnancy centres run by anti-choice organisations, they're the ones giving misinformation. They're the ones saying that women will have... Um, a chance of getting breast cancer, which isn't proved scientifically, that they'll, um, that they'll suffer depression, which isn't proved scientifically. Um, so I, I just think that, you know, the information that anti-choice um, organisations want to give isn't accurate. And I think what they're concerned about is giving accurate information, mm -hmm. really. And that is what um, the conversation between doctor is, that, you know, that's what two, you know, there are two doctors involved in this and then the clinic. And there's, there's um, loads of opportunities for um, women to ask these questions. And we don't get an overwhelming feeling from women that, they, that they're not getting this information or they're Actually, not do, satisfied do, with their choice. What mm. they are unsatisfied is with the access. OK, we've well, only got time for one... Access. We've only got time for very briefly one more. Ashley, do you think that by keeping abortion uh, as, a, as a criminal act, it's actually going to reduce the number of, of women that actually have it? Do you think it actually achieves anything? Well, at the moment, I'm sad to say that uh, we're not enforcing the law. 
as it was written. Do you think it should be enforced? Would you like to see women going to prison for life for having an abortion? I would, I would like to see the lives of all human beings protected. Under but does the that human mean women rights. going to prison for under, having an abortion? Under the Human Rights Act, which says that all of us have the right to life. So I would ask, what would we want the law to say when it comes to a human being's right to life? And how far should we go to protect their rights to life? I mean, most people don't know that at 16 days, it's been detected, that heartbeat's detected at 16 days. And at six weeks, brain waves. And, and most abortions happen after that time. I'm so... just trying to get from you a really clear yes or no answer, though. Do you think that, that, that women should go to prison for having an abortion, potentially so, for life? Yes so, or no? So at the moment, most women, because they don't know that, they're, that it's a little human being inside their body... I'm sure women know when, they're when they get pregnant that there's a human being inside well, them. Well, we have talked to women that have said, no, the doctor said it's a clump of cells. It's not a human being. It's just a clump of cells. But do you and think, yes or no, women should go to prison for, for, for having an abortion? I believe that in the future, at the moment, no, because it's legal in this country. But when the law, if the law became illegal, if it made it completely illegal to have abortions, then we should be protecting the lives of pre-born children in the same way we should be protecting the lives of born children. OK. So... Good to talk to you both. Ashing Hubert for, from uh, Pro-Life uh, Campaign, Christian Concern, uh, and also Kerry Abel from Abortion Rights. Thank you both very much for coming in and talking Thank to you. us. We will make America great again.